This episode of the Bounce Back Blueprint Community Podcast is being brought to you by the Stop Whining and Write Masterclass. The Masterclass is for you if you are ready to set yourself and others free by writing and writing. You can get all the details and register to join us June 2nd at bit.ly slash stop whining and write. Now let's get into this week's episode. Hey Beacon, welcome back to your Bounce Black Blueprint Community Podcast. I am your Bounce Back guy, Tiffany Huff Struthers, and I'm super excited to have you join me for another episode here today. Before we dig in, I want to thank you all for your shares, your likes, your comments, and of course, your reviews. And I want to share a review that was left on the podcast this week. And this review comes from Herdeen. And it says, get your bounce back. This is a powerful podcast. Tiffany gets you back together by doing a soul check that requires a seatbelt. The seatbelt is required because of all the whiplashes of tilting your head back and saying amen. Straight wisdom. Loving my weekly dose of spiritual bounce back. Thank you so much, Herdeen, for sharing that review. And I would love to be able to thank you as well. So if you have not already, please do take a moment to leave a rating and a review. And every week I will be sharing the reviews with you. The title of today's episode is Put Your Head Down. And this is a specific um, command that I received from God toward the end of 2019. So let me give you some perspective. Um, Probably midway through 2019, right around my new year, because my birthday is in June. So right around um, my birthday in 2019, I started feeling really discouraged. I was very distracted. Um, I was doing a whole lot. And yet I constantly felt like I was in quicksand, like I couldn't get my footing, like no matter how hard I tried, I wasn't moving higher. Um, And I recognized and I knew for sure that God did have and was preparing me for elevation. But no matter what I did, I was just not making the progress that I expected to. Right. And so I was crying out. I was seeking God because I was growing weary and doing good. And I know that the word says, do not grow weary in doing good. Right. And so I was seeking out, I was calling on God. I was trying to figure out what was going on, you know, and what I know for sure is that on this bounce back journey, if you don't keep that direct connection with your source, you will find yourself growing weary. And so basically, um, one day in my quiet time, while I was crying out, (laughs) whining and writing, uh, God clearly said to me, Tiffany, put your head down. And I was like, what do you mean? And he was like, put your head down, focus on what is right in front of you and let me deal with everything else. And I have to be honest, this was very challenging for me. Um, And in fact, I'm still being stretched because of what he told me at that time. So once I embraced it and because I was so exhausted, Um, I had grown so weary when he released me to put my head down. I was like, okay, let me just drop some balls. And I did it very abruptly. Um, I went silent on my social media pages for my business. Um, I made an announcement to my email subscribers, um, that I quit the weekly love letter, which was, um, a weekly devotional slash letter that I sent out to my subscriber every week for, for four or five years. Um, and I also, um, eased into putting an end to coffee and clarity and coffee and clarity 
um, was a monthly, at one point, twice monthly, um, gathering for women that I did. Um, and it was a fellowship. It was a leadership development. It was a place where people connected and made new friends and really just grew and challenged each other on this journey. And initially I, um, moved it from monthly to quarterly. Um, but by the time God gave me the word to put my head down, I decided that the final session of Coffee and Clarity would be in December of 2019. And so there were a lot of things that I had been doing for a very long time. Um, and when I say a very long time, I mean in the grand scheme of how long I've been in business and really walking out my calling the way God had been um, instructing me to. Um, and so those things were all things that I had been building and growing and working to perfect, honestly, so that God would get the glory. And I was really exhausted from them. And I can be 100% transparent and say that part of the reason why I was exhausted with what um, God was calling me to do, part of the reason why I was too exhausted to continue to execute with excellence is because I was struggling to um, communicate what I felt was the value associated with what I was providing in each and every one of those spaces. And I also was challenged by the fact that God was releasing me from some of the people I had been serving and calling me out to serve a very specific group of people within um, the space that I was in, right? And so what happened was, um, as I was releasing the things and the pressure decreased, what happened was I went into a serious space of grieving and I was grieving because I felt like, God, you know, I've been building this for years. I've been working on this. I've been diligent. I've been consistent. And now you're telling me to put my head down and release it. And everyone around me is succeeding, right? Quote, unquote, everyone around me is being elevated. And for some reason, you keep telling me to start again. And I really couldn't make sense of it, right? And God had to remind me of the beauty um, and the process of growing through things with him, right? And the way he explained it to me was in the perspective of looking at a tree, right? Sometimes, sometimes we have to release beautiful things and a tree nature is a perfect illustration of this truth. So in the fall, when the leaves start to become yellow and red and sometimes purple and orange, and to me, they are at their most beautiful point. When they get to that most beautiful point, they are released. The the beautiful leaves are the ones that we are sweeping and raking up and putting into garbage bags. They are the ones that precede the season of quote unquote ug ugliness, if you will, right? The season when the tree, for lack of a better way of saying it, is putting its head down, right? In the winter, when the tree's head is down, when there are no leaves on its branches, a tree looks barren. And in many cases, the tree looks ugly. But the reality is in that season, the tree is being prepared to do what it was created to do. And that is provide oxygen, right? To give life. If the tree was not willing to release those beautiful leaves, right? If we... Um, saw trees out here in these streets running around trying to pick up those beautiful leaves, they would spend the season when they are supposed to be at rest and being um, nurtured and being prepared for the new leaves to grow. They would interrupt the cycle of life 
that is necessary for the trees to manifest what they were created to manifest. And I hope you are following along with me there. Meaning that I had to make peace with releasing beautiful things and embrace the season with my head down so that God could do the work in me necessary to prepare me to bring life and give life to what was to come. And I really want to encourage you with this because, you know, recently when I was thinking about this and reflecting about sharing this, I got in my feelings because, you know, I'm in this space now where I'm starting again, right? Where a lot of what I'm doing is much more refined, praise God, (laughs) and clear to me. But also at the same time, I've been considering how much I had to release And the fact that I felt like I was starting over, but I had to be reminded that a 100 year old tree, when it releases those beautiful wing leaves is not starting over. It's preparing for new life at 100, 200 years old. And the same is true for you. If you're in a season where God has told you to put your head down or he has told you to release some beautiful things, be encouraged. And I really want to share um, three of the things that he reminded me of in this season of putting my head down. And I think it will encourage you as well. And the first is everything has an expiration date, right? We are born on a certain date. We expire on a certain date. Food expires, um, you know, credit cards expire, coupons expire. Everything has an expiration date. And, you know, the word says it as there is a season for everything, right? But the challenge is being able to accept that the expiration date happens maybe before you're ready to release it. You know how it is when you go into a store and you have a coupon and you are about to get so much for so little and then you get to the register and they say, oh, this coupon is expired. That doesn't mean that what you got, what you came to get isn't still valuable, isn't still necessary for your life. It just means that the way you are going to receive it is different. It looks different and it's going to have a different price tag, right? It's going to cost you something different. And so accepting that expiration, or excuse me, accepting that everything has an expiration date is going to cost you something, but it's also going to grow you. That's number one. Number two, you have to know the difference between your mission and your vision, right? And what that really means is um, what I struggled with, what I was challenged with was um, God had given me this big vision, right? And when he would give me certain parts of it, I would assume, right? Or I would interpret sometimes the revelation to mean that I was to implement immediately, But that's what happens when we get ahead of God. Sometimes God gives you the um, more of the vision than you can manifest in the in the right now. But what you have to do is do the mission work. And the mission is the work that you are doing now to get to the vision. Right. And we have to be able to discern the difference between what is the mission right now in this moment and what is the vision for Um, the future, right? How does the mission, the work that we're doing now connect to where we're going? And I'll be honest, you know, God doesn't have to give us the entirety of the vision. He can consistently give us mission after mission after mission to build up to where he will have us go or what he will have us do. And in certain seasons, he does do that. So when he gives you the the bigger vision, 
First, you need to know that with revelation comes responsibility, right? You have to care for that vision properly. You have to nurture it properly. And in order to do that, you have to maintain that connection with God so that you can get and maintain the discernment on how to steward that vision. And what that looks like is the work that you are doing now, the mission work, right? And because I got got a greater um, understanding of some of the bigness of the mission. In the meantime, I tried to, uh, begin to implement everything and some of it, it wasn't time. And because it wasn't time, I was distracted by things that were taking away from the mission that I was supposed to be focused on in that season. And so God had to remind me to put my head down. He had to remind me that this was a season to release certain things so that I could be prepared to manifest what was next for the vision in his due season. And that leads to number three. um, And that is that dates on a calendar do not determine seasons and shifts in our lives. God does. Right. So even on the calendar, it says the first day of winter, it says the first day of spring, the first day of summer. But you might have some blooming happening in a season that is spring for you. Right. God may be doing a new thing for you in a season that doesn't line up for spring on the regular calendar. And so you can't get caught up in what the world will have you think is happening in a certain season and call into question what God is telling you the season you are in, right? You have to qualify everything you see by what you believe. You cannot qualify what you believe by what you see. Embrace that God is the one who determines the season that you're in and the shifts that are necessary for you to stay in alignment with your assignment in those seasons. And this could even be applicable to the way you share your story, how you tell your story and when, right? When we share parts of our story, our stories don't end because we are still living, right? So there are certain things that are for certain seasons and other things that God will have you reserved for other seasons, but you have to stay connected with him in order to know what is necessary when. So what I had to learn or what I had to do to be obedient in this season, um, with my head down was be courageous, right? Be courageous enough to trust God and know that what he was calling me to and what he was calling me away from in this season was exactly what he knew was necessary. And I can be honest and I want to be honest and I want to remind you that Um, the work that I was doing was not the only beautiful thing that I had to release or make some shifts with, right? There are some relationships even now, um, that I'm coming out of this season with my head down. He is still revealing to me some beautiful things that I have to release. And it's challenging because again, they are not bad things. They are good things, but for where he is preparing me to go, Good things are not enough. Everything needs to be a God thing. And if he can't trust me on the lower levels to execute with excellence, then I can't expect him to elevate me any higher. And the same is true for you. And so if you're in this season, if you're in a space where you have your head down, where God is um, challenging and calling you to release some beautiful things, If God is challenging and calling you and teaching you to embrace grief so that you don't stunt your own growth, there are three things I want to challenge you and give you some foresight about um, that you must be courageous about or you must be courageous enough to do. And the first thing is you have to be courageous, courageous, excuse me, enough to stop doing certain things. Right. And that's part of the releasing of those beautiful things. There are some things 
even though great, even though other people enjoy them. In fact, you know, people are still saying like, when's the next Coffee and Clarity? I miss Coffee and Clarity. And there was nothing wrong with Coffee and Clarity per se, but God decided that the season was up. Does that mean it's over forever? I'm not sure, but in this season, he has told me that Coffee and Clarity is to stop. And so I had to have the courage to do that, to stop doing that and not take on the burden of um, other people's thoughts or opinions about that, not be distracted or discouraged by other people's thoughts or opinions of that because delayed obedience and slow obedience are still disobedience. And in this season with my head down, I want to be wholly obedient to what God has for me and for what he has called me to do. So you have to be willing to stop doing something with courage when God calls you to. The second thing is you have to be um, courageous enough to start doing something. And again, I can be honest, after I shut everything down and was in this season with my head down and really focusing on being famous at home first, really focusing on, um, hearing from God and realigning with him. And because this is not the first time I've had to make a shift or a pivot with the work that I'm doing, I was a little bit leery about starting something else. You know, I was a little bit distracted by, again, what other people might say or think. She's starting over again. She's doing something new again. But I decided... I made the conscious choice to be obedient and let God handle the rest. And so the relaunching of my podcast, this podcast, The Bounce Back Blueprint, um, was part of what I was hesitant to do. I had a podcast in the past. Um, I was not consistent with it, though I had great content because it came straight from God. I wasn't consistent with it. And again, my expectations of the work that I was doing with that podcast caused me some frustration. And so I was leery to start it again, but I had to be courageous because it's what God has called me to do. So I want you to consider, you know, if you've had to put your head down What is God calling you to stop doing and what is he calling you to start doing? And the beauty of it is that when we release those beautiful things, even if he does not immediately reveal to you what you are supposed to start doing, right? Even if your harvest or your season of growth doesn't appear visually to be happening immediately, embrace it. Embrace the time when you have no leaves on your trees, when no one is necessarily bothering you, when no one is um, in your space, right? When you aren't distracted and you can focus completely and wholly on preparing, right? Embrace the season with your head down before he reveals what he needs for you to start because you know, like I said, with revelation comes responsibility. And so once he tells you, you got to move. And then the final thing is that, um, he reminded me through this season is that you have to be courageous enough to take a risk. And you might be thinking, well, you know, the thing he told me, he told me to start is a risk. And that might be true, but what I know for sure is that when you take one leap of faith, you are simply preparing for the next leap. And so if you have started what he told you to start, or if you are in progress, you're working on it, do not be surprised if he calls you to take a risk. And for me, it was making an investment into what he's calling me to do for this next season. And... Um, I've made investments before. I think it's important to make investments into um, your business, into yourself for personal and spiritual development. It is necessary. It has been transformational and life changing for me. However, um, this investment wasn't necessarily planned. 
um, there were other things that could have taken priority um, over this investment in this season for myself, for my family. But I, but I knew that God was calling me to make this leap and I couldn't be happier that I was obedient and that I did take the risk. And because I was obedient when he told me to stop, because I was obedient when he told me to start, because I was obedient in taking the risk, my story is now having even more impact than it would have had had I decided to cling to those things that were beautiful, had I decided to remain distracted, had I decided that it wasn't time for me to put my head down right? It wasn't at the very end of the year, which is usually a time when I'm preparing for reflection and making plans. No, this happened mid-year. Put my head down mid-year. And I recognize now that um, it was necessary, right? Growing pains are real. Growing pains are real. Grief is real. And grief is not only something we grieve when someone dies. We have grief when our seasons change, when our lives shift. And so I really want to challenge you in this season, if God is calling you to put your head down, if God is calling you to release some beautiful things, be courageous enough to embrace the process. Be courageous enough to embrace the process. Don't whine through the process, right through the process. And if you are challenged with how to do that, I got something for you. On June 2nd, we are going to be hosting the Stop Whining and Write Masterclass. And it is exactly what you need if you are in a space where you are whining through Um, what God is calling you to instead of growing through what God is calling you to. And writing is the perfect way to press through and write your wrongs. Writing is writing. So if that's for you, then you can click the link in the show notes, bit.ly slash stop whining and write and join us for this masterclass. It is free and your future self will thank you for doing it. Before I let you go, of course, you know what I'm going to say. Make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you are sharing this episode. Make sure if you haven't already, but you've been blessed by this episode that you leave a rating and review because when you do, you create opportunities for other beacons of light and hope just like you to find this podcast and be blessed. Remember, sis, God is not going to play you, but if you are clinging to beautiful things because you don't understand and trust God's perfect plan, you are playing yourself.